Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tech Gaming and AI News Nerd Cap of the Week. This week we're going to be breaking down everything new from OpenAI's 2025 Dev Day, and there is a lot to cover, a lot to be excited about. But first, here's a message from today's sponsor. Before we get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Privacy.com. If you've ever been nervous about typing your credit card info into some random website, this is definitely for you. Privacy lets you create virtual cards that protect your real debit or credit cards when you shop online. It's like giving websites a decoy card, one that you can completely control. With these cards, you can set spending limits so a subscription can't overcharge you. You can pause or delete a card instantly if you don't trust a merchant. Or you can even lock a card to a single site so if the number leaks or they get hacked, it's useless anywhere else. You can also use this as a card directly inside your Apple or Android wallets on your phones. You can set a limit and if you lose your phone, you don't have to worry about someone charging you out the wazoo. It's super fast and easy to use too. I've started generating cards right before I buy things and it's been a game changer for protecting my info, especially for online subscriptions, trials, or even small tech purchases. Now, privacy has a few different tiers depending on how you're wanting to use it. The personal plan is free and gives you up to 12 virtual cards per month. The plus plan is $5 a month and it allows you to use up to 24 cards with extra features like category locking and shared cards. The pro plan is $10 a month and it allows you to use up to 36 cards per month with no foreign transaction fees. And it also has 1% cash back on eligible purchases. And finally, for power users like me, there's a premium plan that comes in at $25 a month that allows you to use up to 60 cards every month. Now, one of the misconceptions about the number of cards that you can use is yes, they allow you to create 60 cards per month. However, it's only a monthly limit. So this month I can create 60 cards. Next month I can create 60 cards and the next month I can keep doing that over and over and over, which allows me to build up my arsenal and use it for pretty much anything and everything that I do online. And here's the cool part and where you come into the equation. When you sign up through my link, you and I both get $5 in privacy credit to spend anywhere online. All you have to do is sign up link your funding source and make your first purchase using a virtual privacy card. It's a simple way to protect your money, your identity, and your peace of mind while grabbing a little bonus on the way. So if you have a US bank account and you wanna shop safer online and keep your real card private, check out the link in the description below to start using privacy.com today. Thanks again to Privacy for sponsoring. Now let's get back into the video. OpenAI just wrapped its third dev day, unveiling a massive lineup of tools, models, and upgrades designed for builders, developers and AI creators. I don't know about you, but I use AI in almost everything that I do nowadays, my workflows, pretty much anything personal I use it for, anything at work. It's becoming, it's becoming a part, a of, part my of my everyday, everyday life, life in almost, almost every, every facet, facet that, you that you can imagine. Can it's definitely useful, but I have to remember not to let it take over my life and let it think for me. So there are things that I won't use it for and things that I do use it for, but OpenAI's Dev Day definitely has me excited for the future. Now let's start with one of OpenAI's bigger announcements. You can now build full apps directly inside of ChatGPT thanks to the new Apps SDK. It's built on top of an MCP that works with any backend and lets developers design full UIs right in the flow of conversation. And soon creators will even be able to submit their own apps to be listed inside of ChatGPT. So imagine you wanna create an app for anything and everything to predict the color of the sky, for instance. You could definitely build that inside of ChatGPT and there's probably somebody out there that would want to use it as well. So you can use ChatGPT, you can have the conversation with the AI, design it, change the design, change the colors, change the features, and launch it directly inside of ChatGPT, which is just freaking sick. I can't wait to have an idea and just be able to deploy it without having to jump through 15 different hoops in VS Code or something like that, or trying to write Python that I don't have a clue how to do. But definitely going to be a super awesome addition to ChatGPT. OpenAI also announced AgentKit, a complete tool toolkit to help developers get AI agents into production faster. It includes an agent builder for visual workflow design, chat kit for custom chat interfaces, and upgraded evaluation tools for testing and prompt optimization. Now this is pretty cool. I think this is going to be very useful in terms of creating the agents and having those custom chat interfaces. One of the bigger Benefits here is the evaluation tools for testing and prompt optimization. I don't know how many times I've asked ChatGPT the same thing in different ways and it 
gives me different results. So having this there is definitely going to speed up that workflow and process for a lot of people, not just me. OpenAI also announced Codex, which is officially out of beta and built for Teams. It adds Slack integration and has a dedicated Codex SDK. And it also has new enterprise level controls for monitoring and analytics. Nothing like having Big Brother standing behind your chair watching your every move and every message that you send. Pro tip, do not send anything on your work Slack that you don't want others to see because they can see it and they have controls and rules set up to flag certain words, certain things, certain, you know what I'm talking about. So these tools are definitely useful if you're on the business end of things, but just be careful when you are sharing and talking inside of these apps. As technology gets better, they're going to be able to basically flag anything and everything that they don't agree with. OpenAI has also announced several new releases on the model side. You have GPT-5 Pro, which is the company's most advanced model yet, built for high precision use cases. You also have Sora 2, which is now in preview. This delivers realistic motion and synced audio through the Sora Video API. I don't know if you've seen the videos out there, Jake Paul, some other ones. It's almost indistinguishable from reality at this point. It is freaking awesome on one side and terrifying on the other. Let me know your favorite video that you've seen so far in the comments below. OpenAI also announced Real-Time Mini, which is a smaller and cheaper voice model that cuts costs by 70% without sacrificing quality. And finally, we have Image Gen Mini, an 80% cheaper version of GPT Image 1 for affordable image generation. OpenAI also launched priority processing for GPT-5 users, offering up to 40% faster token speeds and introduced a service health dashboard to monitor performance across all APIs. The biggest takeaway for me is OpenAI is going all in giving developers and creators more flexibility, faster tools, and cheaper models to build at scale. It really is, as a lot of people like to put it, the best time in history to be a builder. Just imagine where we are going to be in a couple of years. It's actually going to be insane. I can't wait to get a neural link implanted in my brain so that I can do this as fast as I think. <laughs> So that was just a summary of everything that happened at OpenAI's 2025 Dev Day. There is an actual live recording of this if you'd like to go watch the event in full. However, that is all I have for today's video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, remember to stay nerdy, y'all. Peace out.